All right, so you're seated behind the steering wheel of your new C300, and I'm gonna run through the tech uh, from the easiest, most obvious stuff to kind of the more complex stuff in the center screen. Um, I like to do this sort of left to right. So obviously your door lock and unlock has fallen up here. Um, it kind of goes in the shape of the door handle, looks nice with the shape of the uh, seat adjustment. This is the newer style seat adjustment for Mercedes. So it's still in the same position, but it's uh, it's more touch sensitive than you, it previously there was actually like movement to these items. Now it just sort of recognizes the pressure. So if I like if I, for example, push forward, my seats moving forward, but the actual metal here isn't moving. Uh, you can raise and lower the back of the seat. You can raise and lower the front of the seat. Um, they did away with the, our previous vehicles had like a little movable separate piece. Now the seat just kind of grows. If I press that thigh extension, it just gets larger or smaller. So that, that's what the little hump here is for uh, thigh extension. So once you get the seat where you like it, then you'd move on to the steering wheel. So that's this little joystick here. So up, down, left, right. They did away with the uh, the toggle for heated steering or some of our models had a little kind of like you turn it like an ignition. The heated steering is actually linked now to the heated seat. So when I click that on, I'll get a little note on the dash saying heated steering wheel on or I can tell the car to put it on by itself if I want just uh, heated steering. So once you get the seat where you like it, steering wheel where you like it, then you'd move on to the mirrors. So the mirrors, uh, pretty simple. You just press the left one, you push down on these to move it up, down, left, right. Press the right one, you do the same for that side. Uh, the center button, that's in most Mercedes vehicles, that is a button that allows you to fold the mirrors in while the vehicle is running. So by default, they will fold in when it's locked but that's like if you were traveling down a really narrow street or say you were parking um, and waiting for somebody and there was busy traffic, you might wanna fold your mirrors in. But yeah, so once you get those three things where you like it, so steering wheel, seat, and mirrors, then you'd wanna lock that into one of the memory positions. So you press M1 and you hear that little sound, it means it's, it's remembered. So now if somebody messes with the seat and so on, I just press one and it takes it back to the way I like it, the way I had it. Um, the other buttons down here, you've got your windows, they're all auto, uh, full up, down, your lockout for the kids. Um, you've got a button on this. This stuff here, people don't tend to play with very much because once you put it on auto, you know, you're kind of good to go. Some people do want to manually force their lights on, so if I turn it over to the right, I get that little indicator. If I press the little button down below, that is your fog light. So you can see how it's showing like a little bit of a, a rear illumination. I think one of the rear taillights gets a bit brighter. And if the vehicle's equipped with front fog lights, it would also turn those on as well. Um, and then down below, you've got your parking brake. Now in a Mercedes, that is automatic. So it's gonna be on when you're in park. And then when I put it in drive, it disengages and I put it in park, it re-engages. So you don't really need, this is a, kind of a manual override, but you don't need to worry about that. It'll just automatically engage and disengage for you. Um, moving on to the steering wheel controls. Uh, so the steering wheel, you've got kind of a bank of controls on the right, and a bank of controls on the left. The bottom half, they're kind of have their own purposes, but the top three you can see are the same. So you've got a house, an okay, and a back button. That's because you've got two screens. So the idea is your left hand can control your left screen, and then you can use your right hand to navigate the right screen. So I can press and kind of move things around there. So when it comes to the screen, right now we've got kind of the most default basic view. So you've got just what cars, you know, for the last hundred years had, my speed, my engine speed, and how many kilometers I've driven. But you can really customize this. There's like probably hundreds of combinations. So if I start swiping on this little okay, it's not, I'm not touching anything. I'm just, just like on a smartphone. If I start swiping, you can see the middle is changing what's on display there. And this data that's in the middle is all what they call trip data. So I'm kind of changing what I want displayed in the middle there. But if I click the house, you'll see it kind of zooms out and you can see there's other gauge options to the left or the right. So to access those, I would swipe over. And if I want that one, I click okay. And now that's my sport gauges. And I can still swipe through so I can pick some different pieces of information within some of these gauges. So if I go, for example, to the understated, that's, that's the one I actually prefer to use in my car. So understated, you can see, it doesn't even show you 30, 40, 50 kilometers an hour until you're there. Uh, so, and you get a clock instead of the engine counter. So very, very minimal. 
But within that, if I click OK, I can pick a different color sunset to look at. So depending on, you know, if it's cold out, you might want a warmer color, or if it's hot, you might want a colder color. So you can like do a, a lot of customization there. Um, might as well continue with these. So there's a navigation one, which is full screen nav. And if you're using the navigation, it'll show you your turns and so on. Um, there's a driver assistance graphic, which would show you literally like there's a car in front of me and it recognizes that. And if they're moving, it'll show and it'll like, you've got your uh, blind spot monitoring down here. So you don't have to look out, you know, at the mirrors. It's, it's right there in, in your driver display. And then there's a service tab, so you can check things like tire pressure and how many days, like this is obviously brand new, 365 days to the next service. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of your gauge options. And then the other buttons on this side are your cruise. So it's pretty straightforward, just on and set. And it would set my speed. And then if I want to increase my speed, I can swipe just like on a touch touch screen. So no clicking, just swiping. That's one kilometer an hour. If I click the plus or the minus sign, that's going to be 10 kilometers an hour. So there's kind of a quick way to do it or a slow way to do it. And then resume and cancel works just like touching the brake and, you know, resuming. And if you turn it off, it disables it. Now the other side, I already told you the top three buttons. So that is if you want to navigate the screen. So I can kind of move my, and you can see it highlighted that item. So if I swipe over to the left, then it highlighted that item and if I swipe down it's going to go into the map and then it'll go down at the very bottom so I can completely control the screen with these three buttons and I click the house it'll bring up the main menu but honestly most people use it as a touch screen it's this big you know iPad shaped and sized thing that's facing towards the driver so most people would do that but these are there for you uh, the other buttons on this side so Answering and uh, hanging up phone calls, pretty straightforward. If you call up the digital assistant, you'll see at the top. Hello, I'm Mercedes, your voice assistant. Would you like to know more about what I can do for you? No. Okay, if you need help, let me know and I will explain what you can do. So you can ask her what she can do. But what I was trying to say is if you call that assistant up by accident, hanging up the phone also hangs up on her. So it's, you know. It's a default way to kind of, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, the volume control for the radio is touch sensitive, similar to the, uh, the other oh, controls. So you can slide up and down. And if I click the bottom, that's mute. So if I, even if it's playing quite loud, just click mute. And then the star, there's a couple of hidden menus within the screen. So star brings up your favorite. So if I click that, it's gonna pop down my favorites. Now, by default, they put a few things in here that they think people might want to know that the car has available as a favorite. But if I said, you know, I'm never going to use the mobile browser on my phone, so I can click and hold on that and I can delete that and it'll take it out of the favorites. And then see this add button, you can add them in. So if you take the time to curate this, it's nice to have on your steering wheel a, a button that brings up your favorites. And when you go add, there's a whole bunch of things like you, all of these different categories and some have subcategories. So you can have it like access comfort controls, navigation, waypoints, media, radio, apps. So yeah, that's that's what the favorites star is for. And you can see how it drops down from the top. So if I'm on the home screen, you can probably imagine you can access it just by doing that. So just like on a, on a smart device, you've got your favorites. The other ones at the top, there is some uh, toggleable settings. So this is all available in the settings menu, but some people want just a quick way to like turn on manual shift lock or turn off the parking sensors, or if they're going through a car wash or the security system. Like if you're gonna leave your dog in your car, you don't want the interior protection on because your car is gonna know that, that's, or is gonna think that somebody's like messing with your stuff. Um, tollway alarm, most people do want on, except if you were being towed. Uh, and you can block the trunk access. So if you were using the vehicle for like a valet and you had valuables in the in the trunk. So those are those are the items there. And then the little speech bubble, if the car ever has a message for you, that'll have a, like a little icon and the car, it'll probably just say no messages, yeah, no notifications right now. So the rest of the screen, you can have a view that looks like our old screen. I'll, I'll just quickly show you how to do that. So if I click home, I click settings, and I click, uh, Looked uh, too far. I want to go into vehicle, I think it is. No, it must be under system. Yeah, displays, home screen. So I can choose to go to the classic, which is like a, all your icons in a long row that you can kind of scroll through. 
but most people with these newer vehicles do like the zero layer and when you first get a new Mercedes there is a little introduction bubble for where the car can explain this to you but basically my explanation to a customer is the, it's like a computer screen where you've got navigation as your background on your computer so if you can imagine you're sitting there working and nav is always in the background and then anything else you're using is like a little window that you can kind of have you can move them around and you can have them get bigger so if I this is the music uh, bubble so if I click it once it gets slightly bigger I get a little bit more information and if I click it twice then it takes up the whole screen so double click full screen and then you know within here I can swipe and slide my finger around yeah. I can access favorites um, you also uh, if you click either the back or the home it would take you to the home screen or you can click just outside of the, the screen and it'll it'll minimize it so if I just click outside it'll minimize it um, if your phone is connected, which obviously most people would do with their car, then a little icon in the top will appear for either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So that is how you would flip between this screen view and the, say, CarPlay view. So if you click the Apple CarPlay, you're going to have all your Apple widgets, and then you click the house to come back to this. So you can easily flop back and forth. Uh, it's wireless, so that's, uh, that's really nice. With the background view, the map, you, so you can change, if I click this 3D, I can have a top-down view. Um, I can have it, you know, lock into what's north. You can move this around and you can pinch to zoom and, you know, really play with the map. And then if you if you want to recenter it, just click that. And you can do the same thing. I'll show you, uh, actually, I'll wait till I get down there. Uh, the other items at the top here, so where to is if you want to enter a destination, and this is also, this is kind of like a deeper dive into the navigation, so you can have it search for previous destinations, gas stations, parking spaces, um, in the uh, cog, cog usually means like some customization, you can turn on and off, like avoid toll roads, avoid off-road, um, you can under view, click on that, if your phone's paired, you can have a satellite map. So instead of this kind of animated map, it'll have like what Google map uh, satellite view looks like. So you'd see like people swimming pools and grass and water and so on. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what that little bubble in the top left is for, is for kind of customizing that. Uh, the star here is the favorites that you pull down. So that's that. And then the, the little icon there, that is a profile. So you can set up a profile in the car. So similar to like in the olden days, people didn't like when people messed with their seat. Nowadays, people don't like when they mess with their tech. So if I like the sport gauges and say somebody else gets in the car and they've switched it to a different gauge package and they've changed, you know, the radio favorites and so on. What the profile is, is it's going to remember all the digital stuff. So it'll come back to the way you had it uh, based on your profile. So if I click there, I can create new profiles. Um, if you've got a Mercedes Me account, it'll recognize your phone and it'll actually have a, your picture that you've uh, applied to the app but uh, yeah so that's what that is um, the other items so the bottom here is mostly uh, your HVAC controls heating ventilation air conditioning so I can increase or decrease my fan speed so left and right is sort of how much it's blowing and then up and down is what temperature is blowing if I want a little bit more of a deeper dive climate menu will bring it up on the upper screen so if I click that then I can change like the direction of the fan. I can take it, like say my passenger had messed with the, the balance. If I click sync, it'll put it back into sync. Um, and if you click auto, you're basically given the vehicle control of the fans and you're, you're telling the temperature you want, but it's gonna get you there however it sees fit. So you can see, I, I, I'm no longer choosing where the air is going. I'm not choosing the fan speed. Um, I can still tell it not to be as aggressive, but auto is kind of like giving up a little bit of control, but the car is gonna get you there. The other buttons on the side, so the house on the back are the same as this house in the back button. So clicking the house there or here will bring up the, the menu of items. So I'll go over that in a sec. And then these are uh, a way to change your either, like if you're listening to the radio, it would just go to the next station. Or if you're listening to music or something streaming from your phone, which most of us are, that'll go to the next track. But you can also, the vehicle will recognize certain commands without, you might know there's a digital assistant built in. So I can say, hey, Mercedes. How can I help? And the car is going to listen for instructions. But if I say next track, then it's going to go to the next track of my 
music streaming without me having to go through that step of hey mercedes next track so you can just say next track next track next track and it'll just keep going through them same thing if your phone rings you can just say answer um, if you've got a, a home address uh, programmed into the system you can just say take me home and the car will just automatically try and navigate you back home so there's there's a lot of like things that the car can do without you needing to go through that step of bringing up the digital assistant um, but uh, yeah so that's your your track change so I click the house we'll kind of do a little deeper dive into these so the apps is you're gonna have the Mercedes me app on your phone but you also you'd have a gallery view for um, collision photos so if the vehicle detects a collision it will take a picture with each of the outside cameras for like a 10 second period so you can kind of review those photos you can also save your own pictures in here if you want to um, the other one browser that's kind of a neat thing so because this is such a large screen if you were waiting for somebody for an extended period of time and you were planning on watching say youtube on your phone what browser does is it allows you to just do it on here so you you would pick your phone as the data source and then you can see there's a box at the top where you can put in your url and then so you could put in netflix or disney and bring up your streaming service you'd have to enter your your um you know login information but this becomes your your screen that you're viewing on so it's it's quite nice that way uh the other ones here so settings i'm going to save that for last because that's pretty pretty intensive comfort is your ambient lighting so you might have noticed i mean it's kind of bright daytime but there's some ambient light going on all over here it's in the doors it's up in the the overhead console so if i go in here that's where i get to customize that so i can click ambient light and i've got 64 colors to choose from and i can change the brightness and i can change the effects so climate for example if i make the temperature warmer then it'll briefly turn red or if i go colder it'll briefly turn blue but if i go back here if i go multicolor, then i get this slate of like combo colors so if i click miami rose it's going to be kind of a pinkish blue combo and if you've got uh, under effects um the multicolor animation turned on they're going to cycle so what was blue here for a while and pink there for a while will eventually switch so this would become pink and that would become blue so the, it's kind of like the car's breathing color uh, on you while you're driving and, and there's there's some really nice combos in here so it's a it's a nice feature it's a toy but it's a toy that everybody loves the other thing uh, within comfort is the uh, seat kinetics so what seat kinetics is is the vehicle doesn't have massage seats but it has this program which i can only predict it's to help uh, reduce driver fatigue so if you're on a long trip if i turn on my seat kinetics i can do it for the passenger as well what happens is every so often the seat will move a little bit so without any input on the door it's just gonna like either the seat bottom will tilt or the seat back will move kind of keeps you awake on a longer drive and it also changes your position so you don't get kind of stiff in one position for for an extended period of time um, you can change uh, whether it's just the back or just the seat and the length of the uh, so some people like it some people put it on for you know you can see three hours there um, you can also change the uh, uh, seat heating not to turn on the steering wheel so if you don't like that and you can have the car kind of predict where your seat should be based on your height so you, you put in your height you click start positioning and it's going to move everything to where it thinks it should be so that's uh, that's within that comfort tab phone is just going to bring up your phone so right now there's no device paired but it would have like your recent call list and you can dial by, by keypad in here um, you can change which phone is the master for streaming you can have two phones paired at once and they both would would be able to answer calls through the the system so that's kind of neat um, the radio and media are what you're going to listen to while you're driving so if i click radio it brings up that screen same as was the little bubble at the bottom uh, so you can save your favorites it does have the ability to pa pause live music so if i'm listening to this nfl broadcast and i'm getting a phone call i can pause that take my call and then resume it right where i left off so you're not going to miss even though it's live radio you're not going to miss anything so that's a feature people really like um, these vehicles do have a very high-end audio system so the audio files like to click this little gear and you can go into like your equalizer and go balance and fader you can kind of customize some of those sound settings so that's uh, that's in there and the other one media so it's, that would be if you wanted to play music either most likely from your phone or you can 
load music up on one of those USB devices. And if you've got it plugged in there, or if you've got it uh, one of these plugs, the car will recognize that there's music there and you can play off the data stick as well. Uh, so that's media. Info is a tab where the car is just showing off that it's gathering information at all times. So if I click there, I can see like a rolling fuel economy meter. Uh, vehicle data would be like right now, I've got my foot on the brake 19% depressed, right, on the accelerator. You can see the, the car is one degree on this angle and two degrees downhill. Um, I can see like my steering wheel is changing. The, so it's just, I don't know why you'd want to see that. The, the one view a lot of people do like if they're like a sporty driver is this one here. So this one will show you like a bar graph of like how much power the car is making at any given time. You can see like the, the boost pressure for the turbos. So this is kind of a cool view. I actually have that saved in my favorites because you know, sometimes you want to throw it in sport mode and this is the, the screen you'd want in the center. The other one here, smartphone is if you want to flip back and forth between Apple CarPlay. So if I had my Apple phone paired, that would be the Apple CarPlay logo. Um, but yeah, that's, oh, I was gonna say, I saved settings to last and then I was about to skip it. So settings is where you customize all the systems. So anything from like driver assistance, so I can, you know, say, say I like the, um, you know, let's go into here. I like the attention assist where the car is monitoring like signs that I'm falling asleep and I'm wiggling. But if I want to change the sensitivity, I could say, you know, like I tend to fall asleep at the wheel a lot. I want you to be more sensitive. By default, things are going to be kind of like in the middle of the road. Get out of that. Um, so they're going to be uh, like, you know, what the car thinks most people are going to want. Uh, one thing that people do find, let's see if I go into the, which one it is. Oh, it's under assistance. Maybe collision avoidance, but there's the uh, vehicle will tell you when you're speeding, but you can change the uh, the how much it lets you speed before it does that. Um, yeah, you can you can like change it. So I want it to honk when it locks. I want the doors to lock when I start driving. I want the mirrors to fold in. You can again block the trunk access. So there's lots and lots and lots of customization. Each one of these things has like sub menus and sub sub menus. So if you kind of go through each of these and customize them to your liking, then you know the car is even more so customized to you. But that's that's what settings does. Um, so that's that's the home screen. It's kind of in a, a long nutshell. <laughs> the other buttons along the bottom here. So one thing I almost jumped to, like I was showing you how you can pinch to zoom and move this around. The camera here with the P, that is the active park assist, but that's also where you bring up your camera. So if I click that, that's my vehicle right between the two cars. And you can do the same thing. You can kind of move it around. You can zoom in, zoom out. I can see like these are what I call rim saver. So if I click over here, I can see how close my wheel is to that rim. And I can actually, it'll see the angle of the wheel. Um, I can also go like, you know, I want the rear view with the 360 camera or I want, say I'm pulling out, I want the front view. So now it's showing me what's in front of my car. Um, you can drop a pin. So what this does is it remembers on your map when you used this parking view. And the next time you go within a certain proximity, it'll just bring this up. So you don't have to like, if you're gonna be parking there r regularly, you just click that and it'll just bring up your parking view when you get close. So, and yeah, that's your, your kind of cameras. Now parking assistance, that's the other reason you would press that button. So if I'm in drive and I click parking assistance, I get this view where the car is looking for parking spots. So if I were to pull forward, I'm gonna get these like sonar waves coming off of that car. And if a spot that I drive by, the car recognizes, hey, I can fit there. If it's a parallel parking spot, it'll be like a box like this. Or if it's a perpendicular parking spot, it'd be like that. But literally, you can choose to have the car back in or pull in. You just click the spot, you press the button again, and it parks for you. And when you've used the park assist to park the car, you can also click it to pull out of the spot. So you can tell the car, I want to pull left, I want to pull right. So that's, it, it's usually good to get a lesson in that in person with a Mercedes product advisor, but there are videos that go into it in a bit more detail if you want to see, but definitely a neat feature. Um, the other ones down here, so dynamic is your drive mode. So you, you know, I mentioned that sport view and driving a little sporty. So by default, when I put it in drive, I'm going to have a little C here, which is comfort mode. But if I click this dynamic button, 
So now I'm in sport mode. So I get a more aggressive engine, a little bit heavier steering feel, and the uh, traction control is gonna be a little bit more sport oriented, and I get a little S. So if I wanna make my own drive mode, so say I like uh, the aggressive engine, but I don't like the steering being so heavy, that's what the I is for. You can make your own drive mode. Um, and then there is an eco one, which it maintains the comfort settings for the other two, but it does uh, give you a little bit better fuel economy at the sacrifice of kind of engine power. So some people never touch it. I, I recommend after a long day at work, try that sport mode. Uh, the car icon brings up those quick change settings. So it's that same thing that you pull down from the top. It's just another way to bring that up. Um, the uh, middle button is your four-way flashers. So you need to put those on. This little guy here, so by default, it's not gonna have like a layer of security for somebody getting in your car and seeing what you've got saved in the screen. But if you want that, if I put my fingerprint on there, see, to use the fingerprint, act, uh, I have to have an active Mercedes Me account, but I can have it set up so that if I get in the car, I have to like fingerprint scan my way in, or you can do a voice recognition where it won't give you access to like your information that's in the screen, unless you've passed that, that check. Uh, the power button will bring up uh, the option of turning the display off, which you can imagine if you were doing a long night drive, you might not want this on, or you can system off, shuts it right down. So it does a full system shutdown. And then the other ones here are the same as this volume rocker. So if I want to increase the volume, I just slide left to right. And if I click there, it would mute the volume. Um, the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory you've got like charging spots as i showed you down in here um, up top you've got uh, light for a driver and front passenger or you can actually just touch the light itself and they're touch sensitive same thing with the sunroof it's touch sensitive so there's not there's no longer a physical button that you're moving you just slide your finger and it'll recognize that you've requested that you know that slide um, SOS will call uh, emergency services so that's under a kind of a, a button so it can't be pressed by accident and me will call Mercedes. So that's for your roadside. You'd call, press that button and a, a system would come on asking, you know, how can I help? And then the last set of buttons, it's kind of hard to show them, but there's three soft touch buttons under your mirror. If you click one of those, you get this little orange icon flashing. If you have a garage door and you hold it down, it'll learn your code. And then this will start flashing green that it's recognized the code. And then basically the brick that you used to have to keep plugged up here you can keep it in the glove box or wherever and this becomes your garage door button so that you press that and it'll open your garage um, other than that I think that's a good starting point we're coming up on half an hour so if you have any questions I'm sure there's other YouTube videos or you can reach out to me Anthony Bell at a Regan's Mercedes-Benz